New board. Zero guys. Not a game to the end. truck is really just an extension of our border grill. The truck just never could get onto the front burner until just, you know, the last 18 months or so. Um, I think it became something that was more compelling, uh, partially because of um, the social media phenomenon. Twitter. Twitter. Twitter and Facebook. Yeah, you can see exactly where the trucks are going to be. There's also an app that has a map that you can see, and it shows on the map where they're at. It's the Road Stoves app. And the the ability to communicate with your fans, like, in instant, you know, in an instant, tell them where you are, what the specials are. So you just scroll through all the trucks, and you click on one, and then you can see their Twitter feed and where they're at. Some of the trucks are GPS enabled and it shows on a map with a little peg where they are. After all the, those years of thinking, we should have a taco truck, suddenly it was irresistible. We had to do it. Your fish Thank and you. your pork. Thank you, have a great what? day. That's everything. Delicious, this is so good. I got a pork taco, a chicken taco, and an asada quesadilla. It is so good, the flavor is unbelievable. Well worth the wait. I did my uh, fried chicken at the restaurant and uh, people like it and ask for that all the time. And uh, Moby Munch, my partner, uh, approached me and asked me if I want to do a food truck with them. And I said, okay, well, it's our first truck and we're looking to do the other one too. The benefits of the truck are that you can take delicious, fresh, you know, organic, sustainable food to to people who are stuck in places where they're kind of captive and they might only have a couple options and they're not very delicious or healthy or exactly what they want. So suddenly you've, uh, you've brought another option or maybe two or three options because, you know, oftentimes the trucks will go places together and then, um, you know, create just sort of like a little food court. My truck travels all over Los Angeles. I don't necessarily really look at other trucks as competition. Um, I'm pretty confident in what I do, and uh, what I do is a little bit different than other people. As you can see, my menu's a little bit different. I do grilled sandwiches, hand-cut french fries, and salad, and s'mores. Um, I am the only truck that does s'mores. I come from brick-and-mortar restaurants. It's what I did for the last 18 years. At first, everyone was like, no, this is horrible. You're taking away you know, business from these local businesses here, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, really, this is for a few hours. It's not a big deal. Well, I think there are uh, definitely some areas like Abbott Kinney or the Mid Wilshire District where restaurants are feeling upset about um, having competition. My opinion about the food trucks is 100% negative. Um, I feel that the, um, the impact that they're having on the street is so extraordinary that they've actually changed the whole feeling on the street. It's totally bumper to bumper, and they've just literally taken over the street where people aren't shopping and looking in the windows. I'm going to park, trying to park my car in front of my store to prevent the trucks from parking there. It's the only thing I can do, even if I get a ticket. I pay rent here every day. These guys just turn up on First Friday. You know, First Fridays is supposed to be for the people on the street, the, the community, and these guys just come out of nowhere. I, I, hate, I hate the sight of them. I hate the smell. It changes the whole deal on the street. They can't stroll on the sidewalks because they're so congested with people eating off the food trucks who are coming just for the food trucks. They're not coming to walk on our street anymore. Well, we've been here maybe once besides First Fridays, but we work during the week, so it's easier just to come for First Fridays. And we like all the food trucks. <laughs> can I get the, uh, the Munchie Club? Sure. And then can I get a, a s'mores with caramel? Absolutely. And on the Munchie Club, would you like that with Chiabana, six grain, or sourdough? Sourdough. Sourdough. As you can see, we all holiday. <laughs> yeah, we all had a plan. Like each one of us take on a separate, you know, food truck. And I happened to go to the dim sum truck, and she went to the border grill. I mean, it's it's it's. It's absolutely no consideration of the food truck people to the shops. They don't care that they block um, the shops. They don't care that they block restaurants. They want their spot.
As a business person, I definitely have mixed emotions. I like the entrepreneurial aspect of the food trucks, but I really, I think it's inappropriate for them to park right in front of my restaurant. I, I think that's like a slap in the face. When we wind up with uh, a taco truck parking right in front of my Mexican restaurant, it's, it's, not, uh, it, it, it's not right. It doesn't feel right. Initially, when there was 10 or 15 trucks on the street, it brought more people to the street because of their internet marketing. I think it has, as it's grown past that, it's negatively affected the business. Uh, our numbers a year ago on First Friday were better than they are today. So I, I think it has an overall negative effect. When 50 food trucks show up on Abbott Kinney and devour almost all of the parking on the street, it, it doesn't feel right. But Casa Linda, the price point is very similar to the food trucks. Now, the food trucks do bring new people to the street, but the the negatives have started to outweigh the positives. Um, and the general feeling on the street by the locals is that it's, it's a problem. I think Susan and I and, and our truck's philosophy is that we don't want to be right um, in front of a restaurant. We don't want to even be maybe on their block. But we want to be, you know, we'll still, we'll try to be as kind of, um, as, you know, aware and, and gracious about it. But in the end, the customer really deserves to have a choice. And if your restaurant is fabulous and you're really proud of it and you're doing a really good job and bringing what, the peop what your customers want, they're really not going to be affected by a food truck being parked down the, down the road a piece. If, if, they're not, if the customers are not getting what they want in your restaurant, then they're, they might be lured away by the truck scene. I think if you do good food, you know, like at a restaurant, fresh food, good quality of food, you know, you're busy, you know, it's like any kind of business, you know, any kind of a restaurant, you know, food trucks are something, right. make sure to do quality and good food, that's it. Uh, I think a lot of brick and mortar restaurants, if they figure it out, will start getting trucks. Uh, you don't have to pay rent. I mean, you have to pay rent for your truck or lease your truck, but you don't have to pay, pay for your space. You're mobile, you can go anywhere, do different things, different times, uh, less restrictive. I think the food trucks are a great, a great way to launch an idea, or especially, you know, for people who have limited resources and want to give, you know, kind of test run an idea. Uh, we've talked about putting a food truck together um, for Hal's. I'd like to see the food trucks work with us and wind up having specific locations where it doesn't bother anybody, a resident on the street. My opinion is that they should all be directed over to Venice Boulevard, where the street is wide, the sidewalk's wide, people can just walk right down Abikini, go on to Venice Boulevard, and, and they can have an array of food trucks. I think actually, I think we should all work together and uh, I think we could benefit each other a lot if we actually got on the same page.